What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to Inside ACW. Of course, today, a very special show, of course, talking about the pay-per-view Summer in the Asylum. Of course, guys, today, I am joined by Willow. Hello, Willow. Hey, guys. As, uh, so of course, guys, we're going to jump straight into it here. The first match of the night, of course, the ACW Asylum Tag Team Championships on the line. D-Generation X taking on the Usos. Willow, thoughts on the match? I really enjoyed this match, Kill. Like... I honestly didn't expect such a dominant performance DX came out at. I expected a little bit more comeback from the Usos, mm -hmm. but this match itself, it was thoroughly enjoyable through and through. Oh, 100%. DX really shone last night. Such a performance. The Usos looked absolutely unstoppable over the last couple of weeks. Oh, for sure. The performance that they had over the past few weeks, I thought, oh, they're going to hold these titles for a very, very long time. But I don't think they were prepared for the, the storm of DX. Oh, DX, speaking of a storm, they've been absolutely tearing through the tag team division. Of course, after that performance last night, I can't wait to see who the hell is going to step up next against DX, especially with the pay-per-view like Hellbound right around the corner. For me, I'd actually love to see someone like Chaos step up against DX. What do you think? I would love to see another repeat of Chaos and DX, especially now that DX has the titles. But I do believe that the Usos aren't going to let that loss go. They weren't fully on form, I don't think, last night. So I think that they're going to come back. So I think DX might have another shot with the Usos. But I'm really looking forward to see how far DX can take these titles and who and when will they get taken down. I don't think it's going to be a long time before we see DX get dethroned for those tag team championships, especially after that performance last night. Of course, you know, when you're on a big stage like someone in the Asylum, it's, you know, nerves got to get to you. But that didn't happen last night. Again, congratulations to Generation X. Next up, of course, it was a fatal four-way match, tables, ladders, and chairs for the ACW Hardcore Championship. Mason Cole, Jericho, Alex Stryker, and of course, the champion, Malik. Willow, thoughts on the match? I think I'm going to annoy a lot of people. I am so glad Malik retained. Mm -hmm. I'm absolutely over the moon. But I genuinely, in my honest opinion, don't believe that Mason Cole, Jericho and Stryker deserve to be in that match last night. <laughs> what? It's just my opinion. <laughs> I, I, I don't disagree with you, Willow. Like, you really look at Mason Cole only just came back. Did you really deserve a shot? No. Jericho, let's be honest, couldn't fight as well out of a brown paper bag. Like, those three men... They've not really been doing the best. Jericho and Stryker seem to have this little tunnel vision for each other. I think the two of them need to get in a, in a ring, knock some bells into each other and get past that. Yeah. Because they're holding each other back by only focusing on each other. So, yeah, I, genuinely it wasn't my favourite match of the night. Oh, definitely. I agree completely, yeah, completely agree with uh, Alex Stryker and Jericho. These two men, ever since day one, especially when it comes to this championship, they've always just went after each other. No matter what's going on, no matter who's in the match, they always just tunnel vision for each other. And it always ends up costing them the hardcore championship. Of course, if you take it back to the, I believe it was the Resurrection pay-per-view, of course, Alex Stryker, the very first hardcore champion, Jericho got so upset that he punched out a referee yeah. after that match. So ever since then, it's just been, you know, these two men, like, fucking handbags at dawn every single time. And I think it's definitely holding them back. I think it's this tunnel vision for Jericho, as we've just stated. I think it's just whatever beef they have between each other, they need to sort it. What about the cell? Do you think the cell is the right place to end it for those two? For those two, it needs to be something uh, something heavy. So mm. I think they need to get a good going at each other to kind of settle that beef and go, okay, now we can focus on reaching those titles. Fair enough. Well, they put that. Well, of course, Mason Cole as well. I, I still don't think he deserved to be in that match at all last night. I feel like that was more... He's just like, hey, I'm back. I want a match. I was like, oh, fuck it, go on then. But yeah, <laughs> that's kind of how it went down for me personally. How do you feel about Mason Cole being in the hardcore match last night? I can't see him as a hardcore champion. There's just, I don't know, he just doesn't scream hardcore champion to me. Mm. Do you know, maybe give him a few weeks to settle back in, see how it goes. But yeah, I don't think any one of those three men should have been in there last night. No, but of course now that leads us to the champion. How do you feel Malik did last night? I think he did really well. Do you know, he got, he had a few moments where I thought, oh, is one of these ones actually going to maybe finally get this title? Mm -hmm. And But he just kind of went, nope, not letting any one of you three have it and he just came back grabbed those ti that title and was on his way and i was like there we go <laughs> oh 100 percent. of course he took some nasty bumps in that match a few times i've seen a lot of guys i believe it was striker as well that it spared him on through the ladder i think jericho of course uh hit him with a coat breaker from the top of the ladder that was absolutely brutal. i don't know how he didn't knock his teeth out but somehow Malik just got right back up and went, nope, my title. <laughs> you know, straight away, wasn't messing around. He got right back up and it was impressive as hell. I think he proved to the world last night he truly is hardcore. But of course, next up, ladies and gentlemen, it was the women's ultimate bragging rights match. Scarlet 
Lilith, a Nocturna for Generation 1, and of course, Tia Wolf, a Laura, and Melina for Gen 2. Willow, thoughts on the match? This is my personal favourite match last night. I don't know, I thought the women just stole the show. Mm -hmm. Do you know, this match had everything from one-on-one -on -one action to them all just kind of going, oh no, we're all having a piece of each other. Do you know, it, all, it broke down so fast, but it was just, I don't know... Seeing Scarlet and the Disciple of Darkness standing in the corner together was nice. It was. Because usually they were against each other at some yes, point. Yes, they've always had know? issues. So it was nice to see Generation 1 stand tall together, you know. And then Generation 2, I just, I loved it. I just loved the chemistry that Tia, Alora and Melina had together. Mm -hmm. Do you know, but it was just one of those matches I was just didn't want it to end. Oh, 100%. I thought it never was going to end at one point, to be honest with you. Like, that match was pretty much chaos from the get-go. You know, plenty of interferences between both sides. I know a lot of people like to break up pinfalls, but that wasn't what was happening last night. It was just absolute carnage. Once one member of another team got in, the whole, all six of them were in the ring at one point and just ripping each other a new one. But then again, that's always the way women of ACW have been. They've always stepped up compared to the men and absolutely dominate every single night. Like, of course, we do have the men's match to talk about a little bit later on, but this match, in my opinion, probably stole the goddamn show last night. It was absolutely insane. It was everything that ACW stands for. And I don't know what it is about someone in the asylum, but something like this happens every goddamn day time when it comes to the women like at this point you just expect it so we get to someone in this island i think this was number four so once we get to someone in island five if we get there of course but you just instantly know that's it no matter what match the women are in they're gonna fucking kill each other yeah it's gonna be great now i just want to say a laura though oh yes oh a laura what a performance by this young lady last night now guys if you missed any of this match what the hell are you doing? Go and watch it right the hell now. Because, of course, after many eliminations, of course, it came down to Alora and the Disciples of Darkness. She was alone. No one to tag out to. Of course, Tia and Melina both eliminated at this point. Two-on-one situation. It's looking like it's going to be in Gen 1's corner. And this young lady fought her heart out. Eliminated both Lilith and Nocturna for the win. Willow, what are your thoughts on Alora's performance? Her performance last night actually, st last night actually stunned me. Mm -hmm. Do you know, like... Her alone standing against the Disciple of Darkness, I was like, ah, oh, nah, Gen 1's got this. Yes. <laughs> you know, but she just took out Lilith and then boom, out went Nocturna. And I was like, oh my God. Do you know, I said, that's such an impressive thing for a young superstar to go, I took out the Disciples of Darkness. Mm -hmm. She has that now behind her. She got the win for Generation 2. And it was just, I cannot wait to see where this young lady is going to go. Oh, of course. Like, she's been a firecracker ever since day one. She's been on an absolute tear, you know. But then again, when you say when she stood across the Disciples, to me, I wasn't really afraid for her because if you remember back in the early days, she did the same thing with the Twisted Sisters. You know, she's she's kind of used to that gang mentality against her now. But yet, I don't know, like, as you said, this young lady, where's she, where she going to finally end up? But yet, I really thought she was going to win the Women's Championship match last night. You know, so it just shows that, yes, she is phenomenal, but she does have her off nights. Thankfully, last night was not one of them. Thankfully. Of course, let's move on, guys. Of course, up next, it was the Triple Threat Extreme Rules match for the Asylum Inmate Championship, Azzy Taylor, Marcus Payne, and Nathan Henderson. Willow, thoughts on the match? I think this match shocked absolutely everyone last night. Oh, definitely. Definitely did. I don't think people expected the outcome as to what it was. I think people were like, it's either going to be Henderson or Azzy. Yes. But in fairness, my honest opinion, Azzy should have won that last night. Oh, I completely agree with you. Azzy definitely should have taken the match in his stride he was phenomenal from the start of the match he went after everybody he was after henderson he was after pain he didn't give a damn who he had to put down he was putting somebody down last night and he was determined to walk away with that inmate championship definitely do you know like from the minute that match started as he just he had that drive he wants that belt so bad that maybe that drive to get it so bad tires him out that wee bit faster during his so? matches mm -hmm. do you know because he was just going 90 it was just go 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 no time for a quick reprieve let the other two go at it a wee bit it was just he was all there all over both of them but it was just such a shock to see pain come out with that win definitely was a shock for pain because pain recently humiliated by henderson for the championship because held belt for two days henderson got cashed in for a championship shot of course taking it away from him. marcus pain in a shocking victory but of course, that led to the egoness, the egotisticalness, should I say, sorry, of Henderson. How do you think the ego compared last night? I think Henderson losing last night was mm -hmm. probably maybe one of the best things for him right now. Uh, you know, his ego had literally just gotten to a point where he was breaking stuff. He didn't care about his friends or his family. 
So losing that belt, I think, might drop his ego a wee bit and might actually open his eyes to going, oh shit, what did I just do the past few weeks? Mm -hmm. What chaos have I caused? What friendships have I broken? Do you know, it might bring him back into reality a wee bit. So I think losing might have been the best thing for Henderson last night. Oh, I don't think so at all. I think it's going to make him worse. I think this is going to be the breaking point for Henderson. The way he's been acting lately, something isn't right. And it only happens. I find I've noticed this pattern by Wyndham before, especially when he has a championship around his waist. And especially when you get one as big and as prestigious as the MMA Championship, Henderson now losing that belt. I think that's going to that's gonna have a ripple effect in his mind. I think he's going to snap. Ooh, there is also that threat of that happening, do you know, mm -hmm. with how he has been behaving recently. But the question is, how long can Payne hold that title? Now, speaking of holding the title, of course, well, as he has been asking for one last shot at the inmate championship. He wants it this Tuesday. You are the GM. What's your verdict? I genuinely believe if he goes after it too quick mm -hmm. and he loses, he loses all his chance to get that title. Yes. So why not hold off? Why not do it at the pay-per-view? Oh, you're going to do it? Hell that. Definitely. I think that would make for a better, interesting, let him, you know, rebuild himself a bit, strategize himself and... Make it a night off at, at the pay-per-view. Well, there you go, ladies and gentlemen. It's official Azzy Taylor versus Marcus Payne at Hellbound for the Asylum Inmate Championship. Up next, of course, speaking of hell, it was, of course, Eliara taking on Alexandra for the Women's Inmate Championship in a hell in a cell match. Willow? I was gutted for Eliara last night. Absolutely devastated for her. You know, she just couldn't get that win. But this was her first time in a hell in a cell. Mm -hmm. Do you know, and she did absolutely phenomenal. She used that cell to her advantage. She oh, yes. did whatever she could to keep Alexandra down. But Alexandra's not a star to sit in her ass. For no. Long. Do you know, she's going to take a few beatings and go, okay, how do you like it? Oh, of course. Like, speaking of like, Eliara, of course, being in the cell for the very first time, immediately in the match, she did not waste any time other than bringing that cell into the action. Took the champion straight to the outside, used the cell as a weapon, which was phenomenal for a rookie, of course, in that kind of structure. And of course, guys, you've seen a hell in the cell match, you know it can get brutal fast. And it did. Of course, Eliara, absolutely phenomenal from the get go. Everything that the champion came out of with, she blocked it, she avoided it. She was just on par to win the title last night. It was it was almost just written in the heavens. It was gonna happen, but no. Eliara made one mistake, in my opinion. And of course, that was it. She let go of the guilty. Yeah. Of course. Okay. If you guys know, have you seen the guillotine before? Because the headlock submission where you completely choke out your opponent. Of course, Eliara, let it go. What did that lead to? Alexandra immediately locking in her own deadlier submission, in my opinion. Of course, Hell's Gate. And of course, at that point, I believe Eliara was out. But of course, Alexandra was like, oh, I don't care. Story transitions from the Hell's Gate right into that devil's pile driver just to solidify the victory. It was kind of like a way of, I'm finishing you. You are not getting up. Even though Eliara was out, she was making sure that I believe she was sending a message to the rest of the locker room and potentially a little somebody that she's maybe friends with but maybe not for much longer, Isabella. Ooh. And I don't know, like, in that kind of situation with Hellbound around the corner, you know, like, the devil's assassin might be looking to send a message to a tag team partner. Oh, that is intriguing. That's that an would, intriguing mm -hmm. thought. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I do agree that final death nail to Eliara last night wasn't just a message to Eliara. I do believe it was a message to absolutely every woman in that locker room going, you think you can step up and take my belt? Mm -hmm. This is your fate. Now, we've said it for weeks. She is absolutely the yardstick. She is the, the best of the best right now in the, in the women's division, both tag team and singles. And I can't see anyone stopping Alexandra for a long time yet. Maybe Isabella, the run she's been on, but even then, I don't think so. I think Alexandra's going to put down everyone that comes her way. Up next, ladies and gentlemen, was the second Ultimate Bragging Rights match, of course. Generation 1 Pro Johnny, Daddy K&M, and Dive on Inla taking on Kai K&M, Owen, and the Punisher, Justin Phoenix. Will, thoughts? This was a great, interesting match. It was hard-hitting. It was fast-paced, but it was also, I'm just going to throw it out there, Dada k and and Kai k and Wow. Oh yes, of course, guys, referring immediately to that kind of hard-to-watch moment in the match. Of course, Johnny beating the living hell out of Kai k and while Daddy k and his father had to stand on the rope and watch. And of course, then Johnny deliberately went over, tagged in k and Of course, k and he is a legendary superstar. He knew what he had to do last night. And of course, k and setting his own son up for the RKO. But that wasn't it. Because k and hits the RKO, puts Kai down, goes to the cover. Kai kicked out 
Nobody seen that one coming. But what happened next was just even better, in my opinion. Kai turns it right around, hitting his own father with a CKO. It was absolutely phenomenal between those two. I was dying to see them battle all night. But we only got him for a couple of seconds. And that's all we needed. That's all we needed. Kai immediately tagging back out then to Owen going, Yep, I'm done. <laughs> I ain't getting in there. Like, it, it, it was sad. It was brutal. But it was brilliant. You know, because you, you don't want to see a father and son go at each other like that. But at the same time, that, you know, I'm going to hit you with mine. Oh, I'm going to hit you with mine moment was just, oh, it was it was amazing. Absolutely incredible. Well, I think that was just a moment everybody in that chat last night was like, come on, please, please put the two mm-hmm. of them together. But when Kai, and I, or Kai hit his CKO and then instantly tagged Owen in, that was just it for Gen 1. That was oh, just... Yes. When Owen took out K&M, I was shocked. Flipped the switch and that was so the end of that. that was just it. It just became elimination after elimination and fair play to Gen 1. Or Gen 2, sorry, <laughs> my bad. <laughs> they were just absolutely phenomenal. Of course, like everyone in the chat last night, of course, and ourselves the last couple of weeks, thought that Generation 1 was guaranteed. Even I voted for Gen 1 last night thinking, nah, Gen 1's got this. And little did anybody expect a actual clean sweep from Gen 2 last night. Such an impressive performance. Of course, yes, the ladies won their match, but everyone thought the men were screwed. But the men just stepped up last night, and it was I'm so proud of them. You know, they're so inexperienced compared to the Generation 1 Hall of Famers, no less. Yeah. But to get a clean sweep was something truly, truly special. And of course, ladies and gentlemen, finally, the main event of the evening, the ACW World Heavyweight Championship on the line as the golden child, Alistair, stepped up to the beast from the East, Dante. This match, Willow, for me, was such a disappointment. I'm with you on that. It was hard to watch. I just wanted it to end. Mm-hmm. So it just it was that match where you're like, oh, God, no. Do you know, once it started... Alistair was just getting whipped right around the place and you're like, we know you can do better than this, Alistair. What's going on with you right now? And it was just so hard to watch that. I was actually glad when it was over. Oh, 100%, of course. The stipulation, guys, was two out of three falls count anywhere. And at this point, you know, you thought, maybe it's going to be a bit more of an even match. It was far from it. The bell rung. Dante just immediately hammering Alistair. This is not all we expected to see at all. I thought a very evenly going match, perhaps, but... Nah, I, as well, I think we should take into consideration, you know, the last couple of weeks, Alistair, I said on Tuesday, Thursday night, got, well, Friday technically, here on Inside ECW, that Alistair, he didn't, he shouldn't have been in the building. There was no way he was 100% last night. No, I totally agree. I think that match with him and Henderson, I think his concussion was a lot worse than we thought it was. Oh, 100%. Um, do you know, I genuinely believe during that match with Dante, what he might have had some maybe underlying injuries from that match with Henderson that went unnoticed, and he just couldn't get going. Oh, definitely not at all. But who knows what's going to happen now to Alistair. Hopefully he's not injured, but there's definitely something wrong there. But I'll tell you one thing, if I was Henderson, I'd be watching out, because I know for a fact Alistair still is not happy with what happened to him a couple of weeks ago, of course. I've been spared through the barricade, and I don't think a lot of people have with Henderson, of course, to be honest, but... What do you think's next for Dante? Who do you think can step up next? Dante, time? who's going to stop him? What's going to stop him? I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what this man is made of, but there's someone out there who we have maybe overlooked mm, that's nice. going to stop him, but I look forward to the day that we see, see the reign of Dante over. There's one person on my mind, but I don't want to say it in case he jinx it. <laughs> but there's one man that I believe can go toe-to-toe with Dante. Oh, actually, technically there's two, but one of them's out injured. One of them, of course, the injured one, we all know, is Renneth. We've seen him whoop Dante's ass before. Agreed. But he is currently injured, courtesy of <coughs> me. <laughs> but, you know, the other one is actually Braxton. Oh, we haven't seen much from Brax recently. No. The only Bra- thing I've really... I haven't been chatting to Brax much myself, but I do know he's training hard. Of course, but... I don't know, there's something about Braxton, he's always kind of had that big man mentality, you know, he, he looks a lot smaller than he really is, but yet he can just go toe-to-toe with that scary strength with people like Dante, and we've seen it before, because Dante did beat Braxton for the World Heavyweight Championship, but Braxton didn't go down without a fight, he took Dante to the limit, yeah. you know, Bra- Bra- Dante didn't have to kill Braxton <laughs> in that match to Many rip it from his hands, <laughs> exactly, but I don't know, that's the guy I think is going to be able to take down Dante, but then again, as I say, Dante's beat him in the past, who knows what can happen, maybe Reddit might come back very soon and actually whoop Dante's ass, wouldn't that be nice kids? <laughs> well, for all I say is, I do look forward to seeing who's going to do it, yeah, I, 
already Dante, and this scares me a little bit. He is slowly encroaching on the longest reigning world <laughs> champion of all time. Ooh. And someone's got to up his ass pretty soon because that's mine. <laughs> that is my title. No one's taking it. Even if I have to step up my sub whoop his ass, you know what I mean? Oh, no. That's a match I would actually be interested in seeing. We've already got one major Indian <laughs> superstar. We don't need this, the Koji M injured either, will I? Well, that's true. You know, without if the, if the, you know, if I'm injured, then there's no show. So, uh, yeah, <laughs> I don't think it's a good idea. Do, nobody hurts a comic though. <laughs> Please, a fragile now. You know, I'm retired <laughs> for like, what, the fifth time now? <laughs> but anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's it for another episode today of Inside ACW, of course, guys. Make sure to like and subscribe to catch every new single episode that goes live here on YouTube. And of course, guys, make sure to share the video with your friends and your family. Hell, share it with your granny and your dog as well. You know, stick some earphones on your doggy and let them listen to it. I'm sure we'll lull them into a lovely lullaby sometime. Of course, guys, don't forget we do stream on Twitch. <laughs> Every Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. ACW, of course, live every Tuesday and Thursday with pay views every second Saturday. All the action kicking off at 9 p.m. GMT. Willow, when do you stream? I stream every Wednesday and Sunday, and I will be back live this Wednesday. Hell yeah, guys. But of course, as I said, ladies and gentlemen, fuck, I forgot. Oh, well. Anyway, guys, as always, stay crazy, inmates. Stay psychotic. Oh, hell yeah. All right, guys, we'll catch you in the next one.